It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Konnichiwa everyone. Today we have got some wonderful cedar. I just picked this up from your local big box retailer of your choice. It's uh, pretty green stuff so we're gonna let it sit for, I don't know, a week or something like that before we use the majority of it. But to make it fit in my car I did have to take these cutoffs but we're gonna make some cool stuff out of these. Primarily some Japanese sawhorses. But like I said, a lot of this stuff you buy is pretty green, so we're going to let this sit for a good while before we use it. Kind of let it do its potato chip warping, twisting, whatever action you want to do with it. And then once that's done, we're going to see what we're left with and we're going to make some cool stuff out of it. Got some neat plans in mind, but the first order of business is to make these sawhorses. So, see you in a couple of days through the power of editing. Alright, so while we're waiting for our wood to cure up just a little bit and dry out, we are going to cut ourselves a bit of a stop system for our planing beam here. Now, I've been putting a lot of thought into this, and what I think I've come up with is going to be the best compromise for most of these situations. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a little mortise here. You can kind of see I experimented with some uh, threaded stops, or not threaded stops, threaded, uh, those little thread things you push in wood, whatever. Anyway, and it didn't really work out, so we're gonna do something a little bit more drastic here. So I'm gonna mortise out a little piece, about that big-ish, maybe. And then we're gonna actually take this other piece of red oak I've got here and mortise it on that, so we'll have like a T-bar stop sort of thing. I'm kind of excited to try it, and if I wanna make a thinner one, all I gotta do, get another couple pieces of wood, make them the right size I want, and hey, you know what? It'll work just fine, I think. That's, uh, that's a workout. We're almost there. Whew. That was pretty fun. All right. So much sawdust, or not sawdust, saw chips. Well, uh, you know what I mean. All right, well, we're getting there. I didn't drill it quite, didn't drill it as square as I thought I could, but you know what, that's okay. We're just gonna keep squaring it off here. As long as it's square and holds this flat straight across, I'm okay with it. But we're gonna keep at it, just got a little bit further to go. Uh, not that much further, but eh, you know, progress is progress. some good progress just a really quick and dirty sort of mortise and tenon thing going on there does not have to be pretty it does have to be practical all right yeah I mean that is the dirtiest mortise but you know what check this out there we go nice big beefy planing stop and I can really make that work I'm just gonna plane this down you're gonna chamfer off these corners here, make it a little bit nicer to the touch, and I got enough space I can tap it back out. Yeah, there we go. Quick, easy, quick, easy, and effective. Pretty good on that. So while the glue's drying on that, I actually wanted to show you guys my entire thought process with this. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get rid of anything that's a unitasker. Now, if you know what a unitasker is, it's one tool that does one job and can't do anything else. So because this is a two-sided stop, I can actually use it both ways. Now I'm actually using the bench kind of as a sitting bench and a workbench at this point. I've actually found that working sitting down is really, really fun. And it's a bit of a challenge, so you got to think a little differently about your setup, but luckily traditional Japanese guys have been doing it for centuries, so you know, you just kind of got to borrow what they do. Going with the anti-unitasker theme here, basically on this side I have a basic Japanese planing beam or a Japanese planing bench, whatever you want to call it. 
So on this side I can actually use my Japanese planes just, you know, like normal. So all I really have to do to use it in a western style is simply take it and put it on this side. Get my plane a choice and so the final word on that is if you've got a limited space you need to set up your stuff so that you can do multiple tasks with multiple different methods without having to have a bunch of unitask or equipment involved so you're not just stuffing things into your closet when you're not using it. Alright so next up on the agenda here in making these horses, this wood is set out long enough I think I'm going to go ahead and start chopping it up. I've just been out here steadily working away on some other projects which you will see in the future. man once told me, if you want to find the quickest and easiest way to do something, put your laziest guy on the job. Alright, so I know this is not the traditional way to do these, but we're just kind of experimenting, have a little bit of fun here. If it doesn't work, then, well, we know one way that just won't work. Come on, there we go. All right, let's kind of encourage these to go together a little bit better. It's eh, better. All right, while those are drying, we're going to get these other ones glued up and ready. All right, here we go. Charging blindly forward because we are so brave. Charging blindly forward to fall into our graves. All right, well, these are a far cry from being Pinterest perfect and Pinterest worthy, but it's not about making it pretty, it's about making it practical. So we're going to let these sit for a good bit. And oh yeah, a little tip for you. I picked this up from Paul Sellers, which if you have not subscribed to his YouTube channel, you definitely should. If you need to clean up glue, grab old wood shavings and uh, clean it up. That works better than paper towels. some time waiting. Our glue is nice and cured up. We got a pretty nice bond of these two. Now all we got to do, I got to plane them down, get rid of some of these glue marks. They're not quite exactly the same thickness, but we're going to take care of that here in just a second. All right. Decently level. Not perfect, but way better than what it was. I don't like knots, and knots don't like me. Yeah, and that's right in the middle of that cut line. Oh well, just gotta keep at it. Alright, so sometime later we actually have ourselves a nice little block that we're gonna make for our sawhorse. I got the other one over there behind me. A little square piece of scrap wood here, if you ever heard the term a square peg for a round hole, well, there you go. And it will work just fine, I think. It doesn't have to be super precise. These are just going to be quick and easy. I didn't actually want to put the hole in the middle because this is laminate. I didn't want to risk splitting it whenever I would pound this thing into place. But it's not going to be too hard to do. We're just going to cut a little hole on this that corresponds with that. And 
time, just for a little added insurance, just gonna soak it in some good old wood glue. Alright, we're gonna let that sit for a little while. Check back on it in about 24 hours. So, new day and new task. What we're gonna do today, since our glue has completely dried up, we got a nice solid block of a sawhorse, fairly sturdy as well. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna chamfer off all these corners here, just kind of round off the edges, just kind of for a presentation thing, but also so that I don't leave any marks in any particularly soft wood I'm working on. cooking with that check that out we got a nice little consistent chamfer on that just kind of rolled off these a little bit I'm not too big into decorating these kind of things but that one is good and the other one also went ahead and did that off camera but so one of the primary ways I'm going to be using these is in tandem with my planing beam here as you can see what I've been doing beforehand is just kind of stacking up a bunch of these scrap pieces to kind of elevate it off the floor a bit when I'm using it in a sitting position so essentially you just take these Get rid of your scrap, replace it with the sawhorse. It's a done deal. It's nice and wide so I can cut some really wide stock on them and you know I can use them for a lot of different stuff. I'll show you guys some methods to use them and some ways to apply them in the future. But that's going to be the primary use for them is as supports for the planing beam. So going back to my unitasker talk, nothing has a single purpose, everything has a multi-purpose. So the other way I'm going to be using these is as, you guessed it, sawhorses. So depending on the length that I want to cut, simply place these up like so, place some pressure on it, cut away. Alright, so you're looking good with these guys. I got a nice weight to them. They're pretty stable, especially for uh, my little concrete porch here. The reason I went with the lamination method was primarily because these are going to be living outside most of the time and I just didn't want them doing any sort of you know, twisting, cupping, and so the lamination just kind of helps to prevent that. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. You'll be seeing these a lot in the near future. As always, have an awesome day. Arigato gozaimasu. Sayonara.